There was a time when people believed the universe to be a static space. Albert Einstein, even after revolutionizing his theory of general relativity in 1915, still thought that the changing size of the universe was impossible. However, in 1929, a young man named Edwin Hubble emerged. Whether you know about him or not, you've probably heard of the telescope named after him. Hubble wasn't the first to propose the idea of an expanding universe, but he is credited with proving it through his observations. Moving beyond that issue, what we are facing today are differing figures, depending on how we calculate the value of the Hubble constant from both nearby and distant data, as well as old and new. Measurements based on recently observed objects, astronomically speaking, such as supernovae and variable stars, yield a Hubble constant value of about 73.5 km per second per megaparsec. Meanwhile, measurements from very distant objects, representing the early universe, yield a value of 67.7 km per second per megaparsec. With this difference, 73.5 is not equal to 67.7. To add further complexity, in recent years, a new technique has been experimented with, utilizing giant red stars. Measurements from this method yield a Hubble constant value of 69.8 km per second per megaparsec. Falling in between the two previous values has left both camps somewhat disappointed. So currently, we have three different values for the Hubble constant, each measured and calculated very accurately, and each with fervent supporters asserting the correctness of their measurements. Numerous scientific papers have been published on this issue, and sometimes the debates between the factions have become heated. But in reality, what situation are we facing? Initial information. If you've ever heard the siren of a police car change pitch as it moves towards you or away from you, then you've experienced the phenomenon of Doppler shift. The change in pitch is caused by the motion of the siren compressing sound waves as it moves towards you, increasing in frequency. Conversely, as it moves away, the sound waves become stretched out, lowering the frequency. Similarly, this phenomenon applies to light. When an object moves towards you, the light waves it emits will bunch up, and the wavelength will shorten, making the light appear bluer, known as blue shift. Conversely, when an object moves away from us, the light waves will stretch out and the light will appear redder, known as redshift. As an object moves away from us faster, the light emitted from it becomes more redshifted. Edwin Hubble demonstrated that the light from galaxies farther away is more redshifted than from galaxies closer to us. This property implies that galaxies farther away are moving away faster. This is known as Hubble's Law. Thus, not only is the universe expanding, but that expansion is also unstable and accelerating. Hubble determined that the universal rate of expansion is 500 km per second per megaparsec. This means that for every megaparsec, MPC, roughly 3.26 million light years, you observe the expansion rate increases by 500 km per second. Additionally, it is universally agreed that the universal rate of expansion is a noteworthy concept, so we often refer to it as the Hubble constant. The law, the constant, the telescopes. Edwin Hubble left a significant mark on various aspects of the astronomical world, leading to many things being named after him. Edwin Hubble may have clarified that the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate, driven by the outward force of dark energy, even though he couldn't precisely measure the Hubble constant with his tools. Nowadays, we use various methods to measure the Hubble constant. Some measurements are made using data from the cosmic microwave background, the low-level radiation from the Big Bang. Using telescopes like WMAP and Planck, we can examine the magnitude of fluctuations in this radiation to estimate the Hubble constant. We can also consider observations from very distant sources to determine the distribution of matter when the universe was young, using tools like the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Comparing how matter was distributed billions of years ago with how it is distributed now can help us understand more about the expansion of the universe. 
Although we have instruments to perform highly accurate measurements of the Hubble constant, these measurements still don't match up. This poses an intriguing puzzle for the astronomy community as they strive to gain a better understanding of our universe. The expansion of the universe. Astronomers using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope have announced that they have surpassed a crucial threshold in revealing the differences between two main techniques for measuring the rate of cosmic expansion. Recent research further reinforces the argument that new theories may be needed to explain the forces that have shaped the universe. Hubble's measurements indicate that the rate of cosmic expansion in the modern universe is faster than expected, based on how the universe appeared over three billion years ago. These measurements of the early universe come from the European Space Agency's Planck satellite. This discrepancy has been identified in scientific papers over the past few years, but it remains unclear whether the difference in measurement techniques is the cause or if the difference could be due to unlucky measurements. The latest data from Hubble lowers the likelihood of the difference being merely random to 1 in 100,000. This is a significant increase compared to the previous estimate, less than a year ago, which was about 1 in 3,000. The most precise measurements by Hubble to date reinforce the idea that new physics may be needed to explain the mismatch. The tension of Hubble between the early and late universe may be the most exciting development in cosmology in decades. Lead researcher and Nobel laureate Adam Rees of the Space Telescope Science Institute STSCI, and Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland, stated, This mismatch is growing and has now reached a level that can't be dismissed as a fluke. This discrepancy cannot occur randomly. Scientists use the cosmic distance ladder to determine the distances of objects in the universe. This method relies on making precise measurements of distances to nearby galaxies and then moving on to galaxies farther and farther away using their stars as milestone markers. Astronomers use these values along with other measurements of the redshift of galaxies as they pass through an expanding universe to calculate how fast the universe is expanding over time, a value known as the Hubble constant. RAS and his Ishias Uves Supernovae H0 for the Equation of State team have been on a mission since 2005 to fine-tune those distance measurements using Hubble and refine the Hubble constant. In this new study, astronomers used Hubble to observe 70 moving stars, called Cepheid variable stars, in the Large Magellanic Cloud. The observations helped astronomers reconstruct the cosmic distance ladder by improving the comparison between those Cepheids and their more distant cousins in galaxies containing supernovae. Reese's team reduced the uncertainty in their Hubble constant value to 1.9% from the previous estimate of 2.2%. Astronomers have been using Cepheid variable stars as cosmic yardsticks to measure distances between nearby galaxies for over a century. However, attempting to harvest a series of these stars is time-consuming to the point of nearly being impractical. Therefore, the team has employed a clever new method called DASH, Drift and Shift, using Hubble as a point-and-shoot camera to quickly capture images of the extremely bright moving stars, eliminating the need for time-consuming precision. Stefano Casertano, a team member, explains, when Hubble uses precise positioning by locking onto guide stars, it can only observe one Cepheid in each 90-minute Hubble orbit around Earth. So, it would be very costly for the telescope to observe each Cepheid individually. Instead, they search for groups of Cepheids close enough together that they can move between them without having to realign the telescope's direction. These Cepheids are very bright, so they only need to observe them for two seconds. This technique allows for the observation of a dozen Cepheids throughout an orbit. So, we continue to spin the roulette wheel and keep running around very quickly. Subsequently, Hubble astronomers combined their findings with a series of observations conducted by the Araucaria Project, a collaboration between astronomers from organizations in Chile, the United States, and Europe. 
This team measured distances to the Large Magellanic Cloud by observing the dimming of light as a star passes in front of its companion in eclipsing binary star systems. As the team's measurements became more precise, their calculations of the Hubble constant still conflicted with the expected values from observations of the expansion of the early universe. Those measurements were made by Planck, a tool mapping the cosmic microwave background radiation, the remnants left over from 380,000 years after the Big Bang. The measurements were meticulously calibrated, so astronomers cannot dismiss the discrepancy between the two results as errors in any measurements or methods. Both values have been tested in multiple ways. This is not necessarily a disagreement between two experiments. They are merely measuring two fundamentally different things. One is measuring how fast the universe is expanding today, as we see it. The other is a prediction based on the physical properties of the early universe and measurements of the rate at which it should expand. If these values don't match up, there may be something missing in the model of the universe connecting these two eras. Early Dark Energy The standard model of cosmology incorporates all known forms of matter and radiation, as well as their interactions. It also includes invisible substances called dark energy and dark matter, together making up about 96% of the universe. Because there is very little information about these dark components, they are perhaps the obvious place to start falsifying the standard model. The standard model assumes that dark matter consists of slowly moving particles that do not interact with light. But what if we also consider that dark matter is not just made up of a single substance? Since there exist various observed types of matter, quarks, electrons, etc., it is also conceivable that there could be multiple types of dark matter particles. In a paper published last summer in the journal Physical Review D, Loeb and two collaborators examined a form of dark matter decaying into a lighter particle and a massless particle called a dark photon. They theorized that as more dark matter decays over time, its gravitational force would decrease, thereby accelerating the expansion of the universe and reducing the tension in the Hubble constant. However, implementing such small changes to the standard cosmological model could lead to unintended ripple effects. Mark Kamienkowski, a theoretical physicist at Johns Hopkins University, stated, It's very easy to come up with all sorts of small modifications, but it's challenging to do so without disrupting the model's perfect fit with countless other astronomical observations. By adjusting the decay rate and the amount of dark matter lost in each decay event, Loeb and colleagues have identified a decaying dark matter model that they believe still fits with other astronomical observations. Loeb stated, If you add this component to the standard model of cosmology, everything falls into place. However, he is still unsatisfied with the idea of decaying dark matter partly because it introduces two new uncertain quantities into the equations. Since the surprising discovery in 1998 that the expansion of the universe is accelerating, cosmologists have incorporated dark energy into their models of cosmic evolution. But its nature remains a mystery. The simplest possibility is that dark energy is a cosmological constant, the energy of space with a constant density everywhere. But what if the amount of dark energy in the universe is not constant? According to a new study by a group of astrophysicists, the existence of primordial dark energy may be the solution that cosmologists are seeking. The study was conducted by Mark Kamienkowski, a professor of physics and astronomy at Johns Hopkins University, JHU, and Adam G. Rees, the Bloomberg Distinguished Professor at JHU and the Space Telescope Science Institute, STSCI. Their paper, titled Hubble Tension and Primordial Dark Energy, is under review for publication in the Annual Review of Nuclear and Particle Science, ARNPS. In the paper, they explain that there are two methods for measuring the expansion of the universe. The direct method involves using supernova as standard candles, or distance markers, to conduct measurements on a local scale. 
The indirect method involves comparing measurements of the cosmic microwave background, CMB, with universe models, such as the Lambda Cold Dark Matter LCDM model, which includes the presence of dark matter and dark energy. Unfortunately, these two methods yield different results, with the former method yielding a value of 73 km per second per megaparsec, and the latter method yielding 67 km per second per megaparsec. Dr. Rees further elaborated on this matter in an email to Universe Today stating, The Hubble constant is the current rate of expansion of the universe. The Hubble tension is the difference in the value you find for the Hubble constant. When you measure the current rate of expansion as well as possible, or predict the value it should have, based on how the universe handles the Big Bang, combined with a model of how the universe will evolve. It is a problem because if these two ways don't agree with each other, it makes us think we are misunderstanding something about the universe. Late solutions suggest that the energy density in the universe after recombination, when the ionized plasma of the early universe formed neutral atoms, about 300,000 years after the Big Bang, is lower than in the standard LCDM model. Meanwhile, early solutions suggest that the energy density somehow increased before recombination occurred, causing the sound horizon to shrink. For their research purposes, Kamienkowski and Keenan considered primordial dark energy, EDE, as a potential candidate. As Rice explained, the presence of EDE would contribute about 10% of the total energy density of the universe before recombination occurs. After recombination, the energy density will decay faster than other forms of radiation thus leaving the late time evolution of the universe unchanged. Rice stated, it would create an unexpected burst of expansion in the young universe that, if we didn't know about it, would make the predicted values lower than the actual ones. What makes EDE more favored than late solutions is that it implies the existence of a fluid generating energy from nothingness effectively, violating the strong energy condition that GR predicts. Furthermore, such models are very difficult to reconcile with measurements of the cosmic distance scale using Cepheid variable stars and type EA supernovae in nearby galaxies. Targets with low redshifts and type EE supernovae in distant galaxies, high red shifts. In summary, solutions related to modifications to the dynamics of the early universe seem to be the most compatible with the established cosmological constraints. Although there is increasing evidence suggesting the existence of EDE, our current measurements of the CMB are still not precise and powerful enough to distinguish the EDE model from the standard LCDM model. What is needed in the future are improved local measurements to refine the Hubble constant and eliminate any systematic errors. Secondly, more accurate measurements of CMB polarization at smaller angular scales are needed to test EDE and other new physics models. Modified gravity. In the standard model of cosmology, all known forms of matter and radiation, along with dark matter and dark energy, are incorporated into Albert Einstein's theory of gravity, and Einstein's equations dictate how space expands. This means that, besides modifying or supplementing the universe's components in the model, there is another way physicists can reconcile it with the observed rate of cosmic expansion. You can imagine that Einstein's equations are not correct. William Barker, a doctoral researcher at the University of Cambridge began exploring a theory of varying gravity last summer when he stumbled upon a solution to the Hubble tension. Barker found a gravitational model that has been adjusted to act as if there were additional radiation in the early universe. However, in a preprint submitted to Physical Review D in March, Barker and three co-authors acknowledged that further analysis is needed to determine whether the model can describe not only how the universe expands, but also how structures like galaxies and clusters develop. Sergei Ketov, head of the Laboratory of Theoretical High Energy Physics at Tokyo Metropolitan University and a visiting scientist, says, There are many versions of modified gravity because it can be anything beyond Einstein's broad theory of relativity. 
Essentially, modified gravity assumes that at the largest and or smallest scales, gravity behaves differently than at the meticulously tested scales in between, including the constantly explored scales of the very young. Katoff says, There are now many reasons to expect modifications of the broad theory of relativity for both very large and very small distances. The reasoning behind this thought is that until now, as Kitov points out, we have only truly tested the theory of relativity with extremely high precision in our solar system. To name a few cases, we have evaluated how four-dimensional space-time, as theorized, affects the orbits of planets, as well as the rotational motion of gyroscopes aboard satellites orbiting Earth. A series of upcoming experiments some involving the Kavli Institute of Theoretical Physics, are aimed at expanding the testing of the accuracy of gravity beyond the much larger universe. There are currently quite a few important observational tests of modified gravity in the pipeline. They all relate to precise measurements of cosmic parameters involving inflation, dark energy, dark matter, and gravitational waves. When using the term inflation, Katoff refers to the theory that the universe underwent significant expansion in the very early stages of the Big Bang. This inflation is believed to leave traces in the remnants of light from the Big Bang, known as the cosmic microwave background radiation, which permeates space today. The BICEP-3 project is currently searching for these signatures using telescopes at the South Pole. Meanwhile, the Euclid Space Telescope, scheduled to launch next year, will accurately measure the shapes and distances of galaxies from Earth to rigorously test the push and pull effects of dark matter and dark energy. Other efforts include the detection of gravitational waves, ripples in the fabric of space-time described by Einstein's theory of general relativity, first observed in 2015 by the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO a project led by members of the Kavli Institute for Astrophysics and Space Research at MIT. Two other gravitational wave detectors, Virgo and Kagra, have joined the effort. These experiments are raising hopes among modified gravity researchers that ultimate anomalies in the waves will appear, supporting models beyond Einstein's theoretical framework. A gravitational wave detector in space called LISA is also under development and promises even greater sensitivity. Regardless of any new insights that may emerge, Ketov points out that the theory of general relativity has been tested and found to be likely still part of a broader framework for what we call gravitational force. Ketov states, Modified gravity doesn't exclude Einstein's theory, but it shows its boundaries. Fully understanding the nature of gravity will help us not only the origins and past of the universe, but also its future. We may conclusively answer whether the universe will continue expanding indefinitely or ultimately collapse back into a big crunch. More relevant to humanity at present, full computations of gravitational forces will enhance our understanding of fundamental physics. Conversely, this could pave the way for new technologies and capabilities vital for the existence and advancement of our species someday, perhaps across larger galaxies. With modern telescopes providing vast amounts of accurate data on such structures, devising a theory that fits all observations is no easy task. Many theories of modified gravity are not complete theories, and when you're trying to perform detailed calculations with complex data sets, it's challenging to do so conclusively.